All right, who's excited to get started? So I decided to go ahead and start with these branches in the back. If at any point you think I'm doing this in the wrong order, that's totally cool. You do not have to do it in the same order that I do, okay? I stay awake at night thinking, gosh, should I should I have done it in a different order? Actually, I don't, but um, do what makes sense for you. I change my mind about what makes sense for me. Today, this is what makes sense for me, okay? So we're going to start with these vines here. There's one over here. I'll do two. Um, so I'm going to do three ply. So I already split my floss. And we're going to couch. So I did a knot. That's how I anchored this guy. So I'm going to come out. Now, I actually have another needle ready. Three ply. If you want to be fancy, you can do it with just the one needle and floss, but uh, it's a lot easier if you do two. So what I'm going to do is actually kind of hold this out of the way, and here's my other needle. This is not attached here. This is different thread. And I'm just going to do these like tacking stitches. And the way I did them is I put a tacking stitch at every intersection. You don't want to go down in the same hole. You can. You can. I'm going to change my mind. Let's see. Let me do it. Let me see what happens. You want to go really close. That way your tacking stitch will be not too big. So here if I go down in the same hole... All right, nothing bad happened. So you can go down in the same hole. Look at that. Oops. Sometimes you get a little knot behind there. There we go. So I guess I can say that if I did go back down in the same hole here, I would have probably ran into the knot that is anchoring this floss because it's right behind here and I would have punctured it and I would have gotten stuck. So that could either be a good advertisement for not doing a knot <laughs> or for not going down exactly in the same hole when you're couching. So I'm still paying attention to this floss that's just laying here. Kind of going to give it a little tug. If it's too loose, you're going to have like, well, you're going to see it's too loose. If it's too tight, this won't look curved. It'll look, you know, you'll be able to see these, these lines more as um, angles. I think that's something that just takes time to learn is like, what's the best tension? And it can be practice. You know, like when I have done knitting or crochet in the past, oh gosh, it's so hard. You know, if you're just all tense, you're going to have a hard time. You know, you're, your holes are too small. You can't get back in them. It's hard. But so it's the same thing. It's just practice. Okay, so now I am tacked all the way down. So... Here is my floss from this long line. I'm just going to go right in here. So I'm going to go, I'm actually kind of covering that purple line. And the reason is, is when I do that big purple flower, I'm going to cover this intersection. You won't be able to see. So I want it to look like this line's going behind that flower. Okay. All right, now we're gonna do these little straight stitches here. These are like the little fronds on our vine here. And they're just stitches. There's not much I can say about them. I'm just gonna get as close as I can to my vine here with them. Again, just using the three ply, just using the same 
floss I already had on my needle for the couching. I just picked one. <laughs> and make sure if you keep the other one connected back there that it's out of your way so you don't get tangled. For this one, see how it's going under that green leaf, the dark green leaf? I'm just going to go ahead and, and still make the stitch here. And when I do the green leaf, I'm going to do it over. Alternatively, you could make it two pieces like this. It's just a little harder to... Well, it doesn't have to be harder. I'm just going to say it could be harder to make sure it looks um, like they line up to keep the angle the same. You can do it either way. Well, I guess we'll see what happens later when, when I fill in that dark leaf, if you can tell a difference or not. I mean, I guess we won't, but we'll see. I will keep an open mind. I hope to learn some stuff here too. <laughs> I'm just going back and forth. If you want to go up one side and down the other, you can do that. And I'm going from out in. Uh, it just feels right to me. I'm not sure I have a really good explanation other than I feel like I'm more precise when I go down with my needle so I can get really close with that stitch. So that's it. So now I'm going to do the other one. For this tiny little bit here, I'll just do like a straight stitch and then I'll start my couching here.
So I'm going to change my mind about what I said going through the same hole because you can see here I went through the same hole with my tacking stitch and my tacking stitch got sucked into like the void. Um, so I retract my previous statement. I would like to say that I was correct with my initial thoughts that you should not go through the same hole. I think it's especially a bad idea if you're doing it with linen because you already have those big holes and you're going to just, it's like if you have a really small French knot, I've no, I don't know if you've ever done that before. If you have a really tiny French knot in linen, you can actually pull it just through your fabric and then it's gone into the void. So don't go through the same hole. No. Also, if, uh, if you're doing the original version, you're probably doing this with a full strand of floss. The only difference you're going to see is that your line will be thicker. When I redid this pattern, the revised version, I thought it might look cool to do these background leaves a little bit more thin so that the top layer, the flowers, would stand out more on top. Just something I was playing with. Um, I think they both look good. But I know sometimes when people are doing a pattern, they can get stressed about that. Like, how do I know how many strands to use? What's the right way? And, you know, it's just like using like a fine tip Sharpie versus a thick tip Sharpie, like for drawing. It doesn't have to be a Sharpie, but you know what I mean? I'm just thinking about those big fat ones and then those nice skinny ones. Um, there's nothing wrong with either, but depending on what you want to do, one's going to be better for the job than the other, right? Awesome. So I'm just about done here. I'm going to go ahead and anchor my floss here, and then I'm going to grab some of the dark green to do the big leaves at the bottom of the pattern. All right, so let's do the big leaves at the bottom there. So I have my dark green floss. I'm gonna use a full strand just to mix it up. I do full strand like the original version. And I'm basically just gonna do outline of backstitch. It's a little crazy here, right? Cause I have a big jump. I'm just gonna go around that. So really right here, I only have room for just like a stitch. So it's not really a backstitch. It's just a straight stitch here. Okay, so now I'm going to start my back stitch and go along my perimeter. So with back stitch, you come up a stitch length away from the beginning of your line. Oh my going on back there. And then go back. I think I might need another needle. So it's like dry and wintry here. So I have lotion on my hands, which is not something I would usually recommend for stitching because you don't want the like oils on your fabric right like you want to keep like I always wash my hands before I start stitching and I make sure I don't eat while I'm stitching I definitely keep it away from my kiddo um if anyone looks like they're about to touch my embroidery I well I don't let them <laughs> in the nicest way possible uh you just you don't want any stains on it like I know some people will actually wash their embroidery when they're done but I'd rather not um, I just try to keep it clean as I go. So that being said, I am wearing lotion on my hands just because my hands were so dry. I didn't want you guys to see my hands all gross. So here I am with lotion on my hands. And so I have like having a problem of grabbing that needle. Anyways, let's do backstitch. All right. So hopefully you've gotten... <laughs> 
Hopefully you figured it out while I was talking about random things. Just gonna go back, and I am going in the same hole for real this time. Oops, I just ran into my lamp. Fill up a stitch length away. And then down into the previous hole. Or I guess you could say the hole of the previous stitch. Um, and I think the idea is to try to make each stitch about the same length. It'll look more neat. I should grab a thimble. That's what I should do. I like the silicone ones. They're really good for helping you grip. So now I'm just going back down the side. Let's see. There we go. Oops. Snagged on something. see how the clamp is an actual pain in the butt. <laughs> my floss likes to get hooked on it. I can't see the back of my work. But it's worth it for the videos. Otherwise, ugh, it's just so hard to keep, keep the hoop still, you know? Again, tension is important. I will probably say that for every stitch because it's true. Pull too tight, you're gonna be making little puckers in your fabric. I try to think about making my stitches the same tension as my fabric stretched on my hoop. Like the stitches become one with the fabric. Okay, now I'm going to do that vein. I'm pretty close to it, so I'm just going to jump over there. See here, it's tricky. Like, do I do one stitch or two stitches? I think I'll do two. So you may think, oh my gosh, I would rather do those uh, flowers first. And that is fine, guys, if this is just weirding you out. Um then you should definitely do the flowers first. For me, today, it's just making sense to do the leaves first and then the flowers on top. So there I just did another little jump like I did before. You don't wanna travel too far with your floss. So like once I'm at the end of this tip of this leaf, you know, the next place I need to go to is the other leaf. So what's the best way to get there? Hmm. So if I just go straight across, I'll probably show up through the white fabric. So I'm actually probably going to weave the floss down one of the sides of the leaf to kind of get back to where I want to be.
So I'm going to go back down and then I'm going to kind of weave my floss under the, the back of these stitches so that I'm over here versus just kind of like going like this. I mean, that wouldn't be awful. Really what you'd want to watch out for is if you did something like this. Let's see if we can see it. The problem being this is a very dark green and my fabric is very light in color. So, okay, you can't see it because of how my lighting is, but just to be safe, I'm going to go ahead and weave behind here. And no, I cannot actually see what I'm doing. I'm doing it by feel. <laughs> So you can see I'm almost at the end of my floss here and it's perfect because I only have like two stitches left. Over time, I just naturally like uh, twist my floss. I think just as I push my needle through and pull it in the back, I'm, I'm turning it. So over time, you can see I can get these twists. If you ever need to stop and just let your needle dangle to get those little twists out, you should. Also, once I go back here, I'm going to weave the tail here into the back of my stitches. That's how I like to anchor. Awesome. Let's do the next color. So once you've finished your outline doing back stitch around each leaf and doing the center vein, you have a couple options. You could do a back stitch with the lighter green along the inside here, or for this version, I ended up doing little um, like straight stitch veins. This one you can see really a big difference if you're going to be using a full strand like here versus just three ply here, it looks a lot more dainty, more delicate over here. You have more texture. It's a thicker line. So, you know, do, do whichever one you like best. Um, so another option, I mean, there's tons of options, you guys, I mean, you could just fill all of this in. If you wanted to, you could turn this instead of just straight stitches, you could do a bunch of straight stitches right next to each other, which is going to be satin stitch. You could fill with back stitch all the way. Like you could just keep doing rows closer and closer and closer to fill in the whole space with back stitch. There's a lot of different things you can do here. So I'm just going to show you those two options, the back stitch and then the straight stitch veins. I have a full ply again, just because that's what I was already working with. So for this leaf, I'll do the back stitch, and then the next leaf I'll do the veins, and then I don't know what will happen after that. We'll see. <laughs> see how I feel. So when you do this second row, you can have the stitches line up exactly. So that would mean, you know, if I have 10 stitches right here from where I'm working to the end of the leaf there you could also do 10 stitches on this inner row so they all line up which I think looks nice and neat here I'm, I'm trying to do it we'll see if I can keep it up but you don't have to you could just 
you know, keep your stitch length however you want to have it and not worry about the stitches lining up. We're going to do this same exact thing with the big pink flower. So I really don't know if you guys are going to want to watch me do that. Maybe I'll just do one petal because that seems a little monotonous, like hours of back stitch. <laughs> So I don't know if you've noticed when this happens to me, I'm just pulling out and kind of releasing whatever kind of uh, knot I have going on back there. Usually what it is, is where I have the floss folded over, this little tail gets kind of tangly on itself and it's not exactly a knot, it's kind of just like a bunching up of the floss. So I'm just kind of releasing that so I can get through. Also, you might notice that my floss is all crinkly. It's, um, what was that hairstyle? Crimping. Yes, it looks like I used a crimper on my floss. I did not. This was just floss that had been on a bobbin for a while that I then inherited from someone. So I don't know how long it was on the bobbin for. You can see it has like permanent-ish creases. You know, if you get it wet, you can straighten it out. I've actually heard people using like hairstyling methods like straighteners or you use an iron. I don't like extra steps like that because I am lazy. <laughs> so I just don't use bobbins, which means my collection of floss is a little bit messy. clamp. Here we go. Okay, we're almost at the top here. So that was that. Easy, right? Looks pretty good. So, and you might have noticed that sometimes for my last stitch, I don't actually do a back stitch. I actually do a forward stitch. And that's just some weird habit I have. I don't know. I find it easier to go down like that versus coming up over here. There's really no difference. It's just my own weird paranoia. So don't worry about it. If it weirds you out, don't do it. Okay. So now I'm going to just do some stitches here and you know, I don't, obviously I didn't put them in the pattern. Um, <clears throat> I just made it up. So like, let's say I'll start here and then I'm going to come down. Oh dear. So you can kind of use your floss here as like a compass. So do I want it really sharp angled like that? Do I want it like actually horizontal to the leaf, like way out here? For me, I'm going to do something in between. So I'm going to go maybe around here, but I kind of like the look of going down like at a back stitch. So I'm going to do that. Let's split the difference. And then I'll do like a matching one on this side. running into my my clamp so the clamp I'm using right now because I know someone will ask all this is um it's a universal uh table vice so like from the hardware store I actually got it on Amazon but it was like twenty dollars it has a, a ball bearing is that what it's called a ball joint a ball joint that's what I think I'm trying to say so you can angle it like 360 it's not truly 360 but it's pretty cool. I like it. So here I'm thinking, do I want to go into this joint here where I have my stitches meeting, but then the angle isn't the same, or do I want to like stick with the same angle? I think I'm just going to try to keep with the angle I've already got going. But it would also look cool to like change it over time. So again, stitcher's choice here. So for this one, I'm going to come up here, which is about the same distance from here to here. And here, 
I'm gonna again, just look at those angles. I'm just trying to make these like parallel-ish. So I'm gonna come here. I don't need to actually stitch all the way up to here, which is where it would go. I mean, you could, you could even stitch in the back stitches there, but I'm, I don't think it's necessary. So I'm not gonna do it, I'm saving my fingers. <laughs> A lot of stitching. Okay, here's another one. And you can go back and forth or do one side and then the other side. Whatever makes sense to you. I sure say that a lot. This one I think I'll go all the way over here. We'll see if I regret that later. It should be okay when we do our purple. Hmm. We'll see. I'm thinking the line might get squished and then distorted. But if it does, it will be a great learning opportunity. Okay, so I'm just going to repeat that on the other side. Then you can come up at the center or come up at the edge to do this, whatever you find easier. So let's see, there's probably one that would go like there. So I'll just do a tiny stitch here. I like these because they match with the green on the fabric, but they give that three dimensionality. So you get that cool texture. I think it's cool. All right, I'm gonna guess We'd be coming from about here and go down here. So here's my last stitch. Excellent. So next time we're gonna do the little purple flowers. And I think we'll also go ahead and take care of this flower too next time. So awesome, have fun.